ponder a word of uh, Giorgio Agamben. Um, philosophy is always a diaspora and must be recollected and gathered up. Um, the word gathered, gathering, is particularly associated um, with Heidegger's thinking about the language. So, um, for instance, in connection to what what we were thinking with Fichte and Herder, um, one can think of this question whether um, I believe Nietzsche actually says uh, or asserts in his um, reflections on the um, truth and uh, Wahrheit und uh, Luga in the um, in the extra moral sense essay he says that a word on its own is already a concept. So because we have some impression at a specific moment and we link it to the word and then we link that word to other impressions and other impressions and other impressions. So for instance, um, a juniper tree, let's say, um, or think of some specific tree that you're familiar with. And then, um, this word links many things together, whether very consciously or whether um, perhaps across hundreds of generations, thousands of generations, even if we go back into the 70,000 year period, which supposedly um, bridges the origin of language to ourselves. Um, so gathering also can be taken in a more conscious and direct way. It seems very difficult that we can go into um, a word like Cyprus and put together all the uh, collected experience of um, many generations, even, at, let, I mean, we can't even do that with our own experience. We can't remember every um, exposure we had to a tree that we consciously knew or unconsciously knew, perceived in some way, um, in absentia of uh, apperception of it uh, gathered to ourselves in some way. We can't consciously do that, but we can enter this, what I'm calling the um, the genitive uh, Christ or the um, sort of um, this circle of uh, generation gathering um, possession ownmostness uh, which comes every time we try to examine what seems, I think, to many first, and especially when you're younger, as a kind of, um, here are the usual sites at the Spanish uh, uh, bullring. So you think all the um, ideas to be thought have already been thought. Um, there's some things to kind of work through, but they're basically all... Um, of a piece in some way. Um, I think the more one struggles with this um, gathering up of the diaspora, uh, one sees that's not the case and that there's um, radically new um, horizons can open up and the spear those horizons describe can be pierced. So to make it more practical, I think we, we should consider uh, that it's a pressing urgency to bring Heidegger more into a form that uh, where he can be understood, where he can be directly understood by everyone. So, um, for instance, the phenomenon of uh, these debates over... Um, faith and reason, for instance. Uh, those seem to me often to bring out what Heidegger is getting at when Heidegger points out all Dasein have this uh, foot in the future. And this place of the future is amounts to the place of religion. So whether... So there's various ways one can approach it, but say you treat God as a concept then in the Catholic 
um, condition, for instance, uh, in the Catholic system, excuse me, in the Catholic system, then we could get a question about what is presupposed in this concept. Um, for instance, uh, the, the problem of um, the omnipotence or the, um, the, the total power over everything of uh, God. And then in Thomas, uh, this question is, why, if God can do anything, why isn't he doing all kinds of fast, fantastical things all the time? And how is it there can be knowledge and other such questions? Questions of contradiction within the conception of God come up. And then Thomas uh, tries to put a halt to this by saying that God, through his own intellect, uh, puts a limit on his, um, his, his, his omnipotence such that, um, for instance, a triangle must have three sides. And even God can't make it otherwise because he limits himself um, deliberately with his intellect. Um, so that those are problems then that move in the orbit of one conception of God, specifically in this Catholic theological discussion. But we could discuss uh, God in many ways and not necessarily in some kind of strict conceptual way. Um, Heidegger wants to say that such um, accruals, such accruals of long, lengthy struggle with the nature of the universe, um, these become part of a, a given tradition, and they get connected to the word God in one uh, tradition. They get connected to some other words in another tradition, so that the secularists or the most devoted to a materialist science who denies a, a personality behind God, nonetheless um, has a set of uh, beliefs about um, here's a law, a law of nature, and now I'm going to go try to demonstrate that it's it's true, that this, which I'm um, drawing deductions from, this, this belief in a particular law of, about saying, um, uh, Galileo, from Galileo onward, the inertial frame of reference, which is at the core of um, mathematical physics. Now I'm going to go try and prove that this, um, as it were, statue that stands over all the worshippers of um, natural science, as it can be founded in a mathematical physics, must admit this um, this founding myth of the uh, inertial frame of reference, and we can look at everything according to that future that hovers and kind of shakes like Zeus shaking his aegis um, up in the nebulous regions, and occasionally he, he hurls a lightning bolt and it thunders, and, and then there's been... Um, some great discovery in uh, the medical field or in, um, let's say, in uh, the binary maths where zero plus zero is one and one plus one is zero, which power all your computing devices. Uh, so in political terms, though, how do these teachings come to be? They come to be through universities and founding of universities. So one of the reasons this is so urgent is because you have a great war now in the universities of producing um, this future. So people are going around founding universities. For instance, Soros founded a university in Budapest. And um, that's a very great power to be able to found a university which uh, then directs the future of human beings in toto so far as it wins out, so far as one is dominant and one sets um, the direction and these settings of direction are connected to, as it were, um, in one frame of looking at it, a particular, say in a philosophic metaphysical way of looking at it, a concept of God, which we can then apply to any docile whatsoever, whether they're um, laissez-faire, uh, whether they're claiming to draw back from the experts, draw back from the. Um, the Pope and the discipline of the church draw back from uh, Richard Dawkins and the um, insistence on uh, some form of atheism, whatever it is, um, to claim there's this sphere of laissez-faire where, um, 
like Nietzsche's uh, claim to go back to life and say yes to life and say yes to the obduracy of um, the ia ia this um, of the donkey. Uh, this going back to life, as uh, signaled by Lazate, itself brings us into this circle of um, thinking out of some future, um, thinking out of our own future. So um, I want to try to go a little bit and and, and knit uh, a a more sturdy sweater over these concepts of what happened in the sciences between Aristotle. This theme where you you can get it anywhere to some extent, but we want to make more Heideggerian, where the Aristotelian sciences uh, became the uh, modern Galilean sciences and how we can try to um, produce another science which is uh, the science of the truth of being.